But five years on, the wounds have far from healed for those who lived through the tragedy. On the ground, the crisis is not something of the past, but a very much ongoing one that they struggle to cope with today. Five years since Fukushima, 30 years since Chernobyl. The last of our two part series from Japan. 2 46 p.m., March 11, 2011. A 9.0 magnitude earthquake rattles Japan, triggering a major tsunami which devastates the northeast coast. Then the tsunami waves reach the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, resulting in a triple core meltdown, explosions, the world's worst nuclear crisis in a quarter century. On this day five years ago, nearly 19,000 people were killed or left missing, and 160,000 lost their homes and livelihoods. Tokyo Electric Power Company is the operator of Japan's stricken Fukushima nuclear power plant and has often been under fire for its handling of the disaster. We want to ask if the company believed the area surrounding the wrecked plant was safe enough for residents to move back. The radiation measurement our company is responsible for is limited to the area of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. Not only the government, but the general public has access to these measurements by visiting our website. TEPCO is fighting a battle of its own as, five years on, the operator continues to struggle with cleanup work on site. They still don't know how bad the situation is at three of the four crippled reactors. We're trying to find ways to locate the missing melted fuel rods in three reactors at the plant. We don't exactly know what the condition is like there. The radiation is too powerful for humans to extract and remove the melted fuel rods. We plan to use remote control robots to do the job. TEPCO expects decommissioning work to take another 30 to 40 years. Ghost towns surround the plant now, but five years later, there are still more than 6,000 workers on ground zero all of them wearing layers of protection. They're not producing any electricity. They're just cleaning up. Is the nuclear meltdown in Fukushima under control today? It's not completely underway. You cannot say that. You have to be extremely careful. Of Yoichi Funabashi, a former newspaper editor, headed an investigation into the Fukushima nuclear disaster back in 2011, the only investigation not sponsored by the government. Since then, he's been sharing his conclusions at various global events. We still have three meltdown uh, nuclear reactors. You have to also keep cooling that, uh, inject, keep injecting water. Okay? And uh, as a result, uh, we still have a, a lot of accumulated, contaminated water. So we have to purify that. Okay. Okay. And it may take years. So during that process, we will be uh, all exposed to that serious risks. Out of 300,000 children up to 18 years of age in Fukushima Prefecture, 116 were diagnosed with thyroid cancer months after the nuclear plant disaster in 2011. Health experts say this is much higher than the normal rate. But after effects aren't limited to health issues. Still, we have more than 100,000 people in evacuation. Okay? They are forced to live uh, in shelters. Okay? Um, so that impact of that evacuation is so huge. Nobody actually expected that the effects of uh, the evacuation uh, to have such a huge impact, you know. Five years later, many of those people have still been unable to return home. Some live in temporary housing units just outside the exclusion zone and that were only designed to last up to 24 months. My son's family, my grandchildren evacuated far, far away. They won't come back. They have already settled there. There aren't any young people around here. I don't know a single child living in this zone. There aren't any young people here, only old people like myself. Younger people will never come back to Fukushima. It'll just be us, the aged. Tomio Kokubin has been studying the social impact that the nuclear meltdown has left on the people of Fukushima. 
He says mass evacuation uprooted entire communities, divided families, and resulted in the loss of social support networks. It's also had a profound impact on married couples. Mothers desperate to save their children from radiation poisoning evacuated far away. Men had to stay behind because they had jobs here. That collapsed families, and divorce rates soared in this area in the last five years. One of the symbols of anti-nuclear movements in Japan is this tent at a small corner in Tokyo's government office district. It was erected immediately after the Fukushima nuclear disaster, and since then, rain or shine, day and night, there hasn't been a single day it wasn't occupied by protesters. We want the world to know what happened in Japan because of nuclear plants and join an anti-nuclear movement. It's not just about Japan. Nuclear plants are all over the world. This is a global problem. Nuclear is so unforgiving technology. Okay? It may take many years, but I think gradually, I think we have to expand the non-nuclear energy sources you know, to really, I think, uh, uh, achieve a new balance of uh, energy balance. But apart from the few days around the March 11th commemorations when global media run features on papers and TV, Fukushima remains largely forgotten in the minds of most Japanese outside the region. Five years since the world's worst nuclear accident in a quarter of a century, life seems back to normal here in the Japanese capital. Japan has even restarted some of its nuclear power plants as hundreds of thousands still continue to struggle to cope with the aftermath of the crisis. Is nuclear energy the only way out? It's a question not limited to this country.